Welcome to another episode of Bahrain Today, right here with me, Fatma Bastigi. Join us as we cover the latest topics and events of the kingdom. Before we get started, I would like to welcome you to stay in touch with us via our social accounts shown on the screen. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back. February is the International Month of Rare Disorders since 2008 and is celebrated all over the world by awareness raising activities to bring into the spotlight the importance of these disorders and the tremendous support affected people need. The Rare Disease Day team from Arabian Gulf University and Al Johara Center for Molecular Medicine Bahrain is organizing on the month of February a public event to promote the rare diseases cause and increase the awareness about this very important health aspect. This campaign is done every year on a volunteer basis by a team made by medical students and staff representing the Rare Disease Day team from Arabian Gulf University and Al Johara Center Dr. Christina Skripnik Assistant Professor Consultant Medical Genetics the RDD team chair Ms. Sara al and Mr. Hassan al Musawi, year 5 medical students hello and welcome to Bahrain Today how are you guys doing this evening? Great. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Well. It's my pleasure to have you here. Uh, to start with, can we first start by introducing yourselves and how do you contribute in this, uh, you know, initiative? Um, so, my name is Hassan Musawi. I'm a medical student in Year Five in Arab Gulf University. I actually, since I entered medic medicine school, I joined the Rare Disease Day community mm -hmm. and the with the uh, very awesome Dr. Christina. Mm -hmm. And it, it added a lot of voluntary vibes and a lot of humanity. So I'm so glad to be a part of this team. That's great. Dr. Christina? I think I will learn Mrs. Sarah yes, first. Yes, of course. <laughs> um, I, my name is Sarah. I'm a fifth year medical student. I was part of the rare disease team since 2014, even before I entered medical school, wow. since I was in high school. And since that, uh, since that time, I'm very glad to be a part of this team. And I can see how our team is getting bigger and we are reaching for our purpose every year. Absolutely. So I'm Dr. Christina Skripnik. I'm a consultant in medical genetics. I'm working in Bahrain since 2010. Wow. And um, let's say I was very active in the rare disease world mm -hmm. before joining Al Johara Center. And I thought that would be an amazing idea to open here this kind of move mm -hmm. and to help people of Bahrain and of the Gulf to understand how important it is to look different to people who are unique, people yes. affected by rare disorders. Uh, doctor, uh, that's great. But for those who are not familiar with the term uh, rare diseases, can you tell us more about that? Yes, so a rare disease, it's like any other disease, but it's affecting less than one in 2,000 people ba based on the international definitions. Mm -hmm. And these disorders can affect any age, from newborns till old age, uh, any system. And sometimes they are going years without being diagnosed correctly mm -hmm. because um, being so rare, they are not so much into the books, or at least they weren't when I was a medical student Absolutely. like they are. Yes. So patients affected by a rare disease are spending many years without finding the right diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a right diagnosis, you will not have the right management treatment. and treatment. Yes. And you feel alone and abandoned because you don't see anybody else like you. Absolutely. And that leads to, you know, um, affecting your life and those Absolutely. who are around Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And when did you start this uh, initiative and this day, doctor? Why did you decide to do it? It's an initiative that started in Europe mm -hmm. in 2008, mm -hmm. initiated by the European Organization of Rare Disorder, EuroORDIS, and everything we do here, it's mm -hmm. part of their work, continuing their work. Mm -hmm. And from Europe moved to North America, yes. with the North uh, Alliance of Rare Disorders, and then became an international move and trend. So nowadays, more than 100 countries all over the world wow. are doing that regularly in the months of February and during the year. Yes, that's absolutely great. Um, Hassan, as a medical student in your fifth year, so you've got uh, less than uh, two years? 
two years, three years? One, one more year, One actually. more year to finish, yeah. that's great. Um, why is it important for you to be part of such an initiative in particular? Actually, I will, I will underline this question as the diamond question. What is the purpose of Rare Disease Day? Building awareness um, about rare disease is very important because mm -hmm. as research has showed that one in 2,000 um, people, they will suffer from a rare disease at a part of their life. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, on the other hand, um, the majority of these diseases are not curable mm -hmm. and many go undiagnosed. Yeah. But hopefully, uh, after this awareness and after this organization, we could um, Shed reach, the light and yeah, reach to people. We yeah. open channels for a good diagnosis at the right time for the, like, the right persons. And one of our like main purposes and main mm. targets is to let the environment and let those who think that rare disease people are different. Yes. We want to we want to explain that people who are living with rare disease they are unique. They are not different, and mm. we want to educate people so they can they can be so not uh, so like they see as as like these patients or these uh, people, they have uh, passion in life and they can improve. And for me, RDD, like it was an outstanding experience when I see the smile on their faces yes. as soon as they know the right diagnosis and as, as soon as they, they go through the right treatment. Yes. So actually, yeah, we are, we are improving the knowledge of the general public of the policy makers, of the industries, of the health uh, uh, professionals, mm -hmm. of the researchers, mm -hmm. so they can address for the needs of the these uh, people are who you are talk living. With, uh, with passion, Hassan. It yeah. seems that you're really um, <laughs> attached to uh, this initiative and what you guys are doing, and this is great, uh, raising awareness about things. And in today's world, I mean, everything is easy with uh, social media, and that's what I want to ask you, um, Sarah. Um, how do you ensure, um, since being part of this initiative, that whatever you guys do during the month of February reaches people? So, as we mentioned before, that our efforts is like a continuation of what we, what the International Rare Disease Society do. So we are a part of that society. So mm -hmm. we post everything that we do and all the events that it's held here in Bahrain mm -hmm. in the International Rare Disease website. Mm -hmm. Also through the events that we had carried on mm -hmm. all these years, we ensure that we covered it through the social media. Now, actually, uh, I have a, a story highlight in my Snapchat that talks about um, rare diseases, and I, and I follow that because it shows you the, the other parts of the world, things that we miss on a daily basis. Uh, just like you mentioned, these are rare uh, diseases. You don't get to see this on a daily basis. It's great to be you know, aware. Uh, we're, we're in a community, you can spread fear so easily, but being educated and knowing what's happening in the world That's is very the important. Yes. So you can even uh, be here human and, and you know treat people yeah. normally without just fearing uh, whatever is new to you. As I said if you have a diagnosis you will have the door open for a management yeah. and nowadays there are also some treatments that can help tremendously genetic disorders Absolutely. and second yeah. is to spread this to educate mm -hmm. the general public that everybody deserves love, care, and tolerance. Absolutely. Uh, what I'm always saying to my students and uh, to all my patients, a disorder, it's rare till it's affecting you or someone you love. Yes. In the book, can have a frequency, but doesn't matter when you really leave it in the real life. Absolutely. Then you ask how I will do, what I will do tomorrow. Can I go to school? Can I go to university? Can I marry? Can I have a child? There is a treatment somewhere or there isn't. For a lot of these patients, they've been told that nothing can be done. Yes. That's wrong. For any patient, no matter what disorder, something is to be done. You might not have a cure. You might not have a cure now, mm -hmm. but science is progressing tremendously. Yes. You can at least try to maintain their good health and their normal social life. Absolutely. And through our booth in the avenues this year, we try to, blink, to blend together and through easy way to to teach and raise the the, um, the awareness and the information. Because if yes. you are an informed person, then you will be able to understand better. Absolutely. So on different levels, by games for kids and for um, very clear explanation for their parents and adults. Great, that's such an interesting initiative that uh, questions just keep on flowing because I do want to know, uh, why did you decide to uh, start this initiative with students? How important is it to you know have uh, 
all medical parties involved when you raise awareness starting from students and to uh, doctors, centers, how important is it? No, genetics and genomic education is part of any medical training in all big universities all over the world and our university is doing that starting mm -hmm. with year one and ending with year six. Great. So um, genetics and genomics, it's a big part in the medical curriculum. And um, the students saw since they joined the rare disorder team that everything they learn, it's real. Mm. It's not just a disease or a patient or a case. It's a person who is living this life day by day. They learn tremendously and they can explain you how they learn, mm -hmm. seeing these people, interacting with them, understanding their needs and their problems. Mm -hmm. we, a part of the activities we do for the open public in, in the malls, and we also went to schools, they will explain to you. We also do in-house events like wow. open evenings for patients mm -hmm. and families where they can come close and discuss with Great. us and uh, we can create this kind of bond that it's mandatory in this yeah. profession. Yeah. So uh, these informations are there for their studies in, in medicine, but what we do through our activities, it's put it into practice. Mm -hmm. That's really, really um, interesting. And you highlighted very important points that you take this initiative to schools, homes. I was going to yes. ask about that. Uh, do you want to tell me more about this, Sara? Yes. Uh, so here, our aim in the rare disease awareness team is to create that platform that we can use to educate people about how we can merge those patients to society and how we can provide them with help. Okay. So we can, we're going to ask ourselves how this platform will be created. It's by educating people about their rare disorders and how this patient going to be presented mm -hmm. and what kind of diagnosis modality they have to reach. Mm -hmm. Because as Dr. Christina mentioned, rare disorders are of a genetics basics, most of them. Mm -hmm. So they, they, those diseases cannot be diagnosed mm -hmm. in the regular workup that we do in the hospitals. Mm -hmm. So they have to see it and uh, they have to seek for the proper counseling and for the proper evaluation to get diagnosed. Yes. So after that, we have set for ourselves a goal that we want to create this platform. We ask ourselves who we are going to target. Mm -hmm. So we are targeting all the general population from all age and from all educational right. levels. So we are also focusing practically on the kids and children because we see in them uh, the hope generation. and the future for any change that we Absolutely. aim to see here in the community. Mm -hmm. So we target them through our malls activities and we also visit them in uh, schools, give them educational lectures, set for them competitions. Also last year we have invited them to our Johara Center where we have introduced for them the complex com uh, concepts of genetics in a simplified way, in a storytelling way. And then we took them to other stations to test that knowledge that mm -hmm. we try to implant in them in a competitions way. Yeah. And believe me or not, like we target the students like from the age of six mm -hmm. till uh, 15. Yeah. And all even those like uh, students who are small, they can absorb our complex mm -hmm. concept in the way that we present it to them. That's really, yeah. really um, beautiful. Uh, Hassan, I must ask, yeah. as a medical student, uh, part of this, uh, what did you benefit out of this um, initiative? Actually, when I see that we are aiming for uh, these small generations, as Sara mentioned, like six, seven years, so I'm looking forward, like after 20, uh, 20 years, Bahrain uh, population will, will accept more of uh, people who are living with rare diseases. So it has an impact, uh, an effect on me, mm -hmm. an effect on my uh, studies, and an effect of my kingdom, my livable kingdom. Absolutely, I agree. Yeah. Uh, doctor, what's next uh, for you guys? Over the years, we've done a lot of seminars, workshops, um, big events for the medical staff and professional staff, link it together with activities for the patients. So we want to continue into that. Great. I wish you guys um, all the best. You're doing a very noble and uh, beautiful work. And I'm sure um, every, everything you're doing will reflect in the future on, on the upcoming generation. Uh, if not uh, for them to learn, but maybe you'll spark that uh, desire to be in this field and you know. Um, we hope so. Yeah. Yes. We hope so after some years, we hope that we'll get, as Sarah joined us when she was in high school and she yeah. dreamed to be a medical doctor yeah. and then now she dreamed to be a geneticist. Absolutely. As Hassan also has, oh, it's amazing what you do. I want to join your team. Yes. So over the years, we got a lot of medical students who really came not only 
to learn but with their heart yes. to, to involve into Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Because you guys are giving from your heart and I'm sure that reaches to you know the kids, their families. I wish you all the best thank and thank you so, you so much. much for being here on the show with us. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Us. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Karima Sharabi is an artist and spiritualist educated across borders, nationalities and religions. She practices meditation and the art of healing by pursuing her studies of the traditional healing modalities of the indigenous North and South Americans. She believes that this practice actively contributes to her ability to create new and dynamic work. She works across multiple mediums, including logo design, painting, jewelry design, fashion, and drawing. With us in the studio, Karina herself. Hello and welcome to Bahrain Today. Hello, thanks for having me. It's my pleasure <laughs> to have you here. Uh, of course, in the beginning, everyone wants to know how did you start in this field? Um, so I, I've always been an artist um, and I was a housewife for a very long time and I was oh, I'd always had a feeling that I wanted to do something more. Mm -hmm. So I would always draw and take drawing classes and um, just I would try anything, any kind of classes that I could find. Mm -hmm. And um, sorry, one day uh, a friend of mine contacted me from Peru who used to study in Bahrain and um, he asked me to do a design with his daughter's name but in Arabic calligraphy mm -hmm. because he felt a connection to to the Middle East mm -hmm. so I created his daughter's name was Asul which means blue mm -hmm. in Spanish and mm -hmm. um, I created a few designs like I, I changed the shapes of the Arabic letters and I created a boat um, I think I created a guitar because he's a musician wow. and after I just posted on them on Instagram just kind of like really casually mm -hmm. and people really responded. Um, people all around the world, some people who are not even Arab are interested in Arabic calligraphy. Beautiful. So it just clicked from that uh, favor you did yeah, just that, <laughs> for your that, friends yeah, just that happened. one time. That's great. And coming from, you know, a uh, multi different background, how does that help in your um, artwork? I think um, it helps. Well, one, because my father is originally Palestinian. Um, so I've taken Arabic lessons, but I don't speak fluently, but I'm familiar with the letters and mm -hmm. the writing. Mm -hmm. So um, and I'm interested in the words, even though I don't speak fluently. And my mother's American, mm -hmm. um, so I've never really been traditionally um, taught traditional calligraphy. Mm -hmm. So I think because I haven't give, been given a lot of rules, I'm able to go out of the box yeah. and change the shapes, and, and, I, and I don't feel confined to calligraphic rules. Mm -hmm. So I think that kind of helped uh, me to create things that were a bit different, like different mm -hmm. shapes Beautiful. and symbols. That's really great. And you're portraying this in different mediums, as we mentioned. So you've got jewelry, logos, paintings. Uh, how does that help in you know, developing your skills? It does not distract you, I'm sure. It just uh, helps you grow. Yeah, um, you, it's, it's, a cha it's challenging using different mediums. Um, you learn a lot and mm -hmm. it's not just, it is not just about art when it comes to jewelry design because you have to think of um, the production, you have to think of packaging. Um, when, it, when I'm drawing for clients who just want, um, just want a commission, let's say a commission design, mm -hmm. it's, it's a little bit more straightforward. Mm -hmm. But if I'm designing for jewelry or for t-shirts or a logo design, um, you have to take so many other things into consideration. Absolutely. Yeah, especially when it comes to products. Absolutely. It's a bit more challenging. So each of these mediums has uh, its own uh, market, its own audience, yeah. and you get to deal with different types of customers and uh, orders as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. How did that help you grow your business? Um, I think at first I had a, a jewelry company with a partner um, and we made a lot of mistakes, but I think that's actually really important to yes, make mistakes absolutely. because you learn a lot. Um, I, at first, I think f we tried to start too big. Uh, we ordered too too many too yes. many pieces, and um, from that and 
through the learning process, we realized that it's better kind of just to focus mm -hmm. on one thing. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm doing a bit of jewelry, but not as much, not like as uh, okay. so large production. Do you do production. it based on orders? And yeah, now it's just based on orders. And it, the, the first production that we did, we uh, created in Turkey because they have we wanted to do it plated so that they're more affordable. Yes. Um, and Turkey has really good plating, mm -hmm. but um, it, it didn't really, the, the, the idea of mass production doesn't really fit in with my ethos. Um, I'm more about bespoke, small, like um, very unique personal, pieces, unique yes. pieces. So I'm going to do them here. And, and also I like things that are locally produced. Yes. Like I like supporting like the local community That's and stuff. Really great. So uh, we're just going to do things on order and in gold, mm -hmm. um, also because it's a commodity, so that, that helps. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I agree. It's it's a beautiful way of. You've tried the you know the other way. Yeah. And it's time to try something new now. Yeah, exactly. Um, so tell us, we have a few pieces here with us uh, from your collections. Uh, can you talk to us about some of the things we have here? Yeah, sure. And which one of these pieces is closest to you? Um, Actually, the piece, I, I really, there's, sorry, I just, because okay. there's like a few pieces that are different. So yes. um, the one that I really like the most, and it's because I also used it for my own logo, is mm -hmm. the wolf. Mm -hmm. uh, it says, love her, but leave her wild in Arabic. And I'm actually not going to say it because every time I say it in Arabic, people are like, what? Can you, can you try? <laughs> yeah. Can you try telling Oh my God, me? I can't try. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you can read it. It's yeah. There. Um, so it's. I just really r like the wolf symbol, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people do. A lot of people respond to it. Yes. And I created it by writing the Arabic on one side and then reflecting it mm -hmm. so that it makes a symmetrical wolf. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I just really like that it's one. It's really, really beautiful. And yeah. I'm really amazed that th that the wolf is actually letters. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Uh, it, it says yeah. something, and there's a, there's a message behind it, and yeah. you portrayed that very well. And I think uh, people uh, love it uh, just yes. as much as I do. It's interesting. Some people, when they ask for a design, some people ask for a design that is re readable. And some people don't actually want it to be readable. Yes. They just want it them, them to be able to yes. read it. Yeah. Yes, so. absolutely. And uh, what's next for your uh, line? What are you planning? Um, well, I really like collaborating with people. So I'm always open to collaborations. I love collaborating with other designers people that are speci specialized in a certain craft. Um, I'm working on several different things right now. Um, I'm working on t-shirts of a girl in London is producing t-shirts, mm -hmm. so I, I sent her my designs. And actually, not being involved in the production is a lot easier, like mm -hmm. just giving them the design, um, it's just, you like more the straightforward. artistic side of yeah, it, exactly, more, of the, yeah. more than the commodity itself. Yeah, exactly, yes, definitely. Uh, yeah. I, like I just want to draw, basically. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, we actually, uh, if you go back to our YouTube channel and some of the episodes, we've got great guests with uh, great uh, products yeah. that you can actually collaborate with. Yeah, and I, I just that. recently had one. Um, uh, she does abayas, and she does them in a way that it's very um, artistic. And each piece, she names each piece. Amazing. And, yes, and she normally goes uh, for ba paintings on, on one side and the other side it's a plain color and I think having Arabic calligraphy on the abaya maybe would be something uh, people would yeah love. of course I would yeah. love that I wish you yeah. of course um, all the best but before we wrap up I do want to know where can we find you how can we order how does the process work so I mostly work from Instagram uh, my Instagram is at Karima's art mm -hmm. and I have a website as well just so that people can see a variety of work that I do mm -hmm. um, but mostly Instagram and email Great, yeah. great. So I can order any design in my mind. Yeah, exactly. I can just yeah. tell you like the, the name of my daughter, what she represents, what she likes, and you can create uh, a combination yeah, of exactly. all of these things into one uh, Yeah, logo. and usually people have a very profound story that they tell me about a struggle or someone that passed away. It. So I try and create something that's very close to them. I love it. I love the fact that every piece uh, to you represents a story. And uh, to your customers, it's something they won't forget. Yeah. I wish you all the best, Karima. Thank you so much. Thank you so uh, much luck. for having me. Thank you. Viewers, I hope that you enjoyed this artistic and inspiring segment. Don't go away. We'll be right back. of the Kuwaiti National Day. We are here in Hela Fabriar at Water Garden City, showcasing the love between the two countries while hosting a great entertainment for families and children.
under the patronage of the capital governor of the kingdom, Sheikh Sham bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa. The Kingdom of Bahrain held the Hela February festival for the second year in a row, in celebrations of the beloved Kuwaiti National Day. The celebration witnessed a wide participation of local entrepreneurs to showcase their products, along with the fireworks launch in celebration of this happy occasion, in addition to the presence of people from all around the Gulf region that have come together to celebrate the bond between the two countries. to host Hala Fabrier in Bahrain this year for the second time with the Water Garden uh, celebrating Kuwait National Day and we're glad uh, you can see the beautiful celebration with the fireworks, a lot of people from Bahrain and Kuwait are here and we wish everybody to be happy and enjoy the day. about this festival uh, through you know social uh, uh, Instagram and all that and um, what do you want to come here basically it's uh, we came here for the fireworks my kids love it and uh, the one uh, happened the last time on the avenues we, we really enjoyed it so it's nice to be here really good family vibe here. We are from Pakistan and we enjoy a lot here. There are multiple, multiple uh, stores and outlets here, so we are enjoying it. Yeah. This is a very good play area for kids also, so we are enjoying it. Visiting Bahrain this weekend and I'm very happy to, uh, to attend this uh, ceremony, National Day of uh, Kuwait, and it was beautiful to see um, the brotherhood between Bahraini and Kuwaitis. I'm joining today in Water Garden with my special and delicious cake. This is all homemade and uh, it's good that we show the people that uh, home business can be very professionally um, and this is my steadiness uh, I'm a pastry chef so this is nice that I show the people how my taste and they can uh, buy my cake and uh, uh, they will have a lovely and delicious cake and ever and ever celebration. I feel like Bahrain is my second home. Uh, I've been missing Kuwait uh, a lot. I didn't celebrate the national day in my country for three years and uh, today I'm celebrating the uh, national day with my Bahraini friends. Today we have this booth which we will represent uh, our love and happiness and uh, we are glad that you are celebrating about Kuwait National Day and um, yeah we are so happy, we are so happy to be a part of this uh, celebration actually. you enjoyed our segments and I would like to thank all our guests for joining us. If you have any questions or inquiries, don't forget to further contact us on our social accounts shown on the screen. Goodbye and God bless. <laughs>